In today's video, I want to shed a light on a topic that's often overlooked in the tech industry, the harsh realities of being a cloud engineer. As someone who has worked in the cloud space for over seven years, holding both my AWS associate and professional level certifications, having my own business in this area, I've seen firsthand the challenges and the pressures that come with this role. While there are countless videos out there highlighting the perks and benefits of being a cloud engineer, including mine, such as the high salaries and exciting projects, it's essential to have a more of a balanced understanding of what the job truly entails. Now, just like with software engineering, the cloud industry has its own set of unique challenges that can lead to stress, burnout and less than ideal work-life balance. Now, not only am I going to tell you the harsh realities, but I'm going to help and mentor you throughout this video on how to overcome these challenges. Now, I wish this video existed when I started my cloud engineering journey. And you're gonna hear these insights from an expert who has his own international cloud security business out here in Dubai and in England. Now, before we get started, you should check out my weekly cloud newsletter where I share free resources, tutorials, boot camps, and so much more helping you make your cloud move. As a cloud engineer, you'll often find yourself at the center of a company's cloud transformation. Businesses are eager to gain the benefits of the cloud, such as increased agility, scalability, and of course, cost savings. However, this eagerness can sometimes translate into unrealistic expectations. Now imagine this scenario. Your company decides to migrate a critical application to the cloud from on-premise, and you are tasked with leading the project, taking ownership of the full migration. Now, I've been in this position many times. Your management and leadership team expects the migration to be completed in a matter of weeks, without fully understanding the complexity involved. As you dive into the project, you'll realize that the application has dependencies on legacy systems, requires significant refactoring, and needs to comply with various security and compliance regulations. Suddenly, the scope of the project expands, and you find yourself working long hours trying to meet the original deadlines, whilst navigating these unexpected technical challenges. To overcome this, you should always try and speak with as many people as possible who are close to this application to give you as much information as possible in your project discovery phase, which is where you find out what the project is, the application, timelines, and all of the other good stuff. This is just one example of how unrealistic expectations can put immense pressures on cloud engineers. Therefore, it's important to have an open and honest communication with stakeholders, educating them about the intricacies of cloud migrations and setting realistic timelines. Now, even with the best communication, you may still face these situations where you're expected to deliver results under challenging circumstances. Now, this is where you find out what you are made of. When your back is pushed against the wall, do you hide and suffer? Or do you take it in your stride and make things happen? And by the way, I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of May so I can have a nice summer this year without crying to my mother that it's another summer without the 100K YouTube plaque. So hit that subscribe button so I can keep my crocodile tears away from you guys. Now the cloud landscape is always evolving, growing, which means you as a cloud engineer need to keep up with the latest services, tools, and best practices offered by cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Now, each cloud provider releases new features and services at rapid pace. For example, AWS alone has over 200 services with new ones being added all of the time, but also existing services are being updated. Keeping up with these updates can feel like trying to drink from a fire hose. It's almost impossible to keep up. Not just cloud services, but cloud engineering as a whole consists of a wide range of technologies and concepts such as virtualization, containerization, serverless, infrastructure as code, and of course, AI. 
You'll need to have a solid understanding of networking, security, databases, operating systems, and other fundamental IT concepts. So this means you are not only just working and delivering projects at your job, you need to spend time outside of work learning, keeping updated and improving your skills. So what can you do to keep up? Firstly, you wanna set learning goals. You need to identify the skills and knowledge that are most relevant to your role and your career aspirations and prioritize your learning. I recommend that you create a learning plan breaking down your learning goals into manageable chunks and allocate time each week for learning activities. The key here is not to change your learning plan. Make one for 12 months, then break it down into four quarters, then review every month what you've done and then iterate over it. For example, if you want to learn about infrastructure as code, cloud security, and Kubernetes, along with gaining a cloud certification, then break these down so it's easier to learn across the year. It's impossible to learn something new every few weeks. Now, with the new skills and technology that you're learning, you should also apply them. What you learn outside of work should also be applicable to A, your job, and be your own personal projects that you are working on. This makes learning and upskilling more fun and relevant, but also reinforces your understanding. The best way to learn something is by using it practically and applying it to your projects. Now, whilst the constant learning can be exciting for those who are passionate about technology, it can also be overwhelming and lead to burnout if it's not managed properly. So it's important to find a balance between staying current and maintaining a healthy work-life balance. Now, I personally cannot comment on a healthy work-life balance because mine is certainly not balanced or healthy, but it's also by choice. Cloud engineers are responsible for designing, implementing, and maintaining cloud infrastructure that supports an organization's applications and services. Therefore, there's a significant amount of infrastructure management tasks that may not be as glorious as writing code. For example, you'll need to provision and configure virtual machines, set up networking and security groups, and manage storage and databases, along with ensuring high availability and disaster recovery. You'll also be responsible for monitoring the health and performance of infrastructure, troubleshooting issues, and optimizing costs. While tools like infrastructure's code, such as Terraform or CloudFormation and configuration management like Ansible and Puppet can help automate some of these tasks, there's still a significant amount of manual work involved in managing a complex cloud environment. For those who enjoy the creative aspects of software development, the focus on infrastructure management can sometimes feel a little bit tedious and less fulfilling. It's important to understand that cloud engineering is a completely different beast compared to traditional software development, and it may not be a right fit for everyone. So how can you overcome this and improve your infrastructure management? Firstly, it's to automate your infrastructure as much as possible using infrastructure's code tools, such as Terraform, CDK, or even the CloudFormation, if you are on AWS, to automate the provisioning and management of your cloud resources. Now, you also need to set up monitoring and alerting systems to proactively identify and resolve issues before they impact the business. There's also so many monitoring tools out there, so there's no point me recommending one because we could be here all day. Now, one thing I teach and share with my students inside the Cloud Engineer Academy is to document everything that they are doing. Because when you're working inside of your company, documentation is a big thing. So maintaining a clear and comprehensive documentation of your cloud infrastructure, your processes and design decisions, this will keep things on track and ensures the knowledge is being shared across the team, but also helps when new engineers join the team as they can just read up the documentation to get up to speed and ask any questions if needed. Now, if you wanna get started with the cloud and build real world cloud skills, then you should check out my Cloud Engineer Academy, where I provide you with a structured way of learning and guiding you to go from zero to Cloud Engineer Hero, covering the cloud fundamentals, the tools and technologies to learn to become a cloud engineer through self-paced videos, live workshops, and portfolio-based projects. 
Inside a Cloud Engineer Academy, you won't just get access to the course content. You have access to live workshops, a private Discord community of cloud enthusiasts from all over the world, interview preparation with myself, my own personal CV templates to help me secure multiple six-figure jobs, and so much more. Now, one of our students recently secured a new role paying a total compensation of $250,000 a year, which is incredible. Now, to find out more, go check out www.cloudengineeracademy.io and see some of the reviews of our current students. Now, in today's internet world, businesses rely heavily on their cloud infrastructure to power their applications and services. And as a cloud engineer, you're responsible for ensuring the availability, reliability, and performance of the infrastructure. Now, this can mean being on call and ready to respond to incidents and outages, often outside of your regular working hours. When something goes wrong, such as a server failure or network outage, you'll be expected to jump into action, diagnose the issue and resolve it as quickly as possible to minimize the downtime and impact on the business. Incident response can be high pressure and a stressful experience, especially when you're dealing with critical systems. You may need to work long hours, communicate with multiple stakeholders at once and make tough decisions under time pressure. I've personally worked in a lot of incidents and the systems have gone down. In those moments, you have to stay calm, but you also need a clear process to restore the system in place. So when things go wrong, everyone already knows where to find the latest updates on the incident. The last thing that you wanna do is being stuck fixing an issue under pressure and getting hundreds of Slack messages from management asking you for updates. This means you need to push your company to define and document an incident response process, including roles and responsibilities, communication channels, and escalation paths, but also learn from incidents. Each incident should have a post-incident review to identify the root causes of issues and implement measures to prevent future occurrences. Now, being on call as a cloud engineer does rely on the type of company that you work for. For example, if you work in a product-based company versus just being a consultant, most product-based companies will like you to help out on call if needed. Typically more at smaller companies as big companies would have a dedicated operations team or an SRE team that you work closely with. Now for me, being on call is something that I no longer do, but I recommend you doing this early on in your career because you learn so much in those moments. In fact, you probably learn the most when things go wrong and break. Embrace the failure and stay calm. Being cloud engineer can be challenging, but a rewarding career. It's definitely the best role in tech by far, but by understanding the harsh realities of the role and implementing the strategies to overcome them, you can set yourself up for success and make a real impact on your business's cloud transformation efforts. Remember, everyone's journey is unique and it's okay to face these challenges and make mistakes along the way. I've made plenty of them and look where I am right now. Like the video, check out my Cloud Engineer Academy, subscribe, comment, sign up to my newsletter, go do all of those things so I can keep making these videos helping you guys out. Have a great day. Peace out.